we're going to talk about how to configure focus shifting on your Nikon Z series camera and how that can automate your focus stacking when out in the field practicing your landscape photography. In a previous video, we talked about focus stacking for those times when you need sharp focus from the front of the image to the back of the image, and you might have a strong foreground object making using aperture alone difficult to get that depth of field you actually need. With focus stacking the way I demonstrated before, I used a manual process of get my focus point to on an object close to me, get that image, move my focus point through the image five or six times in order to get a series of five or six images that I could merge in Photoshop and end up with that deep, deep depth of field where everything was sharp from the front of the image to the back of the image. Some cameras give you the ability to automate that. And today we're gonna to look at how to do that on a Nikon Z series camera. And the Nikon cameras, they call it focus shifting. And what it does is it automates your focus stacking. You can go in, set your focus point on an object close to you, kick off the focus shifting feature, and it will work its way through the image all the way off to infinity to build a stack of images that have varying degrees of focus points and depth of field. And then you take those series of images, pull them to Photoshop, just like we did with the manual, photo, manual stacking, and blend those images together for that final result. So today we're gonna to take a look at how to automate that process. We'll first look at how to configure it in camera, and then we'll hop out and go down to a, a outdoor scene and we will photograph that with the focus shifting option, take those images home, blend them together real quick and take a look and see what we've got. Okay, so to configure the focus shift options on your Nikon Z series cameras, you want to go into your camera menu. So on the back of the camera, there's a menu button, press that, and it'll bring you by default into the playback menu. Focus shifting is underneath the photo shooting options. So just arrow down to the icon that looks like a camera, arrow over to the right so that you're inside the photo shooting menu. And the focus shifting options are actually at the very bottom of the list. So it's actually faster just to arrow up and that'll take you to the bottom of the list. Focus shift shooting, Currently is second from the bottom, so just arrow up to that, and it'll be called Focus Shift Shooting on the back of the camera. Just hit the OK button to go into that menu, and these are your options to configure for Focus Shift Shooting. The top one is Start, and this is what you click when you're out in the field ready to do your Focus Shift. You get your exposure set, you get your composition set, and you come into this menu, highlight start, click OK, and that starts the camera on its Focus Shift mode. So it takes wherever your focus point is, the closest and then it starts to work its way further into the scene towards infinity to get those shots. To configure the options, the first option you have to configure is number of shots. I'm currently set to 20 and for landscape photography that seems to work pretty good. The maximum is 300 and if you're doing a lot of macro photography or things like that you definitely want more than 20 shots but in this case for landscape photography I do 20 shots and that's the maximum number. It's better to have too many than not enough and if you find yourself hitting that 20 limit then just come in here and kick that number up even higher. It varies on the focal length of the lens and what you're photographing is how many you actually need. So the next up is focus step width. And this is how much deeper into the scene does that focus point move. This is configurable from uh, 1 to 10. And I have mine set to 3. For landscape photography, this will typically work 2 or 3. You can play with those settings to see which works most with you. I've been doing it with 3 and it seems to be okay. Now it's not a defined width, it's really sort of based on the lens that's attached to the camera. So it's just sort of a guideline to how far you want that focus point to move into the scene. Interval until the next shot, I leave set to zero. I'm a landscape photographer, so you know, we're out there, we're not using flashes, we don't have to wait for those to reset and recycle. So we just want it to move through as quickly as possible. So zero seconds means that it'll take my first shot and it'll immediately move to the next shot deeper into the scene. So that helps it move through this exposure gathering much quicker. First frame exposure lock on. This is, it's going to maintain the exposure settings through the frame. I recommend using manual exposure when you're doing this anyways. So I just leave this first frame exposure lock set to on. I'm shooting in manual mode, so my exposure is going to stay the same anyways. By default, I leave this to on. Silent photography, I just leave this to on. I don't need, you know, any, any noise or anything going with it. And starting storage folder, some people like this, some people don't like it, but if you choose starting storage folder, you can tell it to do a new folder. 
So when you start to stack, it'll create a new folder on your memory card so that when you're looking for those stacks, you can jump in and see more immediately where those stacks are. Now, you don't have to do this. You could use the old hand in front of the lens trick, which I sort of showed the last video. So it's really up to you. I currently haven't configured the new folder, but it's really up to you how you like to have your file also organized and things like that. And that's really all you have to configure in focus shift shooting for the Nikon. Once you've got those set, you're ready to take it out into the field. And like I said, when you want to do this focus shift, you will come in here into this menu to get to the start option where you'll highlight it once you've got everything all set up the way you want and click OK to start. Now, one other note is I do throw this into my custom menu just because it is so deep in the menus. So down here, my menu, focus shift shooting, and that just makes it easy for me when I'm out in the field and want to use this and not do a manual focus stack to pop in here, get to this menu option, click OK. It's the same menu. I've just made a copy of it into the, the My Menu. Click Start, and you're good to go. Okay, so I've got my scene here. I've got this rock ledge over here on the right. I've got some cascading water up on some very textured rock, and then some trees and boulders beyond. So very deep scene from front to back, which is why we're going to use focus stacking on this. So what you want to do first is make sure your exposure settings are right. So we want to just pop in there. I'm shooting with an aperture of eight since we're going to stack through anyways. ISO 100, using my histogram, that puts me at about a 1.6 second exposure. So I like that. I'm going to do just a real quick test shot just to make sure I like the way the falls look. Zoom in on that. Make sure I like my motion blur in the water. I'm good with that. So once I'm sure I like my exposure, then I'm going to bring my focus point to an object close to me because the focus shift is going to start with the focus point closest and then work its way through the, through the scene. So you wanna make sure the closest is in focus. I've got that. Now I'm gonna go into my focus shift menu. I got my number of shots to 20. It's better to have too many than not enough. If you run out of images through the scene, then you're gonna have gaps in your focus. So I've got mine set to 20. Focus step width of three, which should work fine for landscape photography. Zero second interval until next shot. First exposure lock is on, that way my exposure stays consistent through the scene. And we're gonna go ahead and start this. Highlight start, press start, and now the camera is going to work its way by automatically moving that focus point through the scene. Okay, so now the camera's captured all those images. Just take a quick look at them. So the camera took 12 images to work through that scene. When we get them home, we'll see if it really needed all of them, but it thought it needed 12. So that's why we're set up to around 20, just because in these sort of tighter situations where things are all a little closer to me, it might need more images to get through. So from here, we just take these images home, we'll stick them in Photoshop, we'll blend them together real quick, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I've pulled the images we did with the focus shift on the Nikon camera into Lightroom, and it did result in 12 images that the camera took as it worked its way from the closest focus point all the way out to through the rest of the frame. So I've got them in Lightroom. I've already done the basic edits to them. I didn't want to cover that here. I've done that in previous videos, so we're just sort of going to skip right in. I've done some basic edits to these images, applied them across all 12, so they're consistent across the 12 images and then we're gonna pull them into Photoshop to do the blending to get the focus stack. But first, what I wanna do is I wanna show you here in the image, what we've got here is this is the scene. I've got the little creek coming down. I've got the rock cliff wall over here on the right. And my initial focus point started right in here real close. And you can see it's nice and sharp, nice and crisp. And that's sort of where I started my initial focus points and allowed it to work its way through the frame. So on this first image, if we jump in and take a look at the back, we can see things are pretty blurry back there. I was shooting at f8, you know, so, you know, I had a reasonable depth of field, but not enough to pull this whole image off. So that's what the focus stacking is going to fix. We're going to pull these in and it'll get the sharp parts of the image from front to back. First thing we're going to do, like I said, we're going to select all 12 of these images and we're going to pull them into Photoshop. And the way I do that is I select all 12 by clicking the first one, hold the shift button down, click the, the 12th image. and I've got them all selected. We're going to right click on them, choose edit in, and at the bottom there's open as layers in Photoshop. And then what this is going to do, it is going to open each one of those 12 images as a layer in a single Photoshop file. And what this is going to let us do, it's going to let Photoshop take its blend and blend those together where it takes what it thinks is the sharpest parts of the image. And we're going to end up with one image that's sharp from front to back. Now, 12 images, it takes a while to pull into here. Um, a lot of times when I manually focus stack, I'm more only around five, six, seven images. But this auto, the, the focus shift did 
12 images. So as it worked its way through. And that's, you know, I had the depth set to three, so it may have been taking more than I would have need otherwise. But it's all, like I said previously, it's better to have too many images so you're not missing a plane of focus than it is to have too few. Okay, so we've got all 12 layers open in Photoshop. And the first thing we want to do is we want to auto align these. So I'm going to start, click on the top image, scroll down to the bottom of the list, hold shift. That's going to select all 12 images. Then I'm going to let Photoshop auto align these images so that everything is right where they need to be. So to do that, we've got them selected. We're going to go to edit, down to auto align layers. Click that, take the defaults, uh, auto is fine, say okay. It'll take a little a couple seconds here to align those. And this alignment, as I've said in previous videos, is really just if the tripod shook a little bit, as the focal length changes, you can get some focus breathing, which things won't always line up just 100% perfect. So this just helps make sure everything is nice and crisp for when we do the blend to get the focus stacked image. So always do this alignment step before you try to blend your images together. Okay, so Photoshop is done, and we have got a little bit of transparent pixels over here from where things shifted and adjusted. Like I said, the tripod was sitting in water at this point, so that could have been making some movement and things like that. It's just a little bit. One of the final steps of the image would be just do a little bit of crop to drop that off, so it's not a big deal. But be aware, it does do that. You probably have to do just a tiny bit of crop to, to drop some of those transparent pixels off the side after you do the auto align. So the layers are still selected. I've got the 12 layers. To do the focus stack, we're just going to go back up to Edit. We're going to go down to auto blend layers. We're going to make sure it's set to stack images and we're going to keep the seamless tones and colors checked and we're going to go ahead and say OK. And then what Photoshop is going to do at this point is it's going to look at each of those layers, determine what it thinks is in focus and sharp, and it's going to start creating masks to either conceal parts that I think are out of focus or reveal the parts that's in focus across all of those images. So the end result is with all of those masks applied, you end up with an image that's sharp from front to back. Okay, so Photoshop has created this mask. Let's take, take a quick look at what it did. So here we are at this, the image at the top of the stack. And if we hide this layer, you can see the parts that disappeared are actually what it thought was in focus. And that's the pieces of the image it's using. And you can see over here on the mask, white is what's revealing. Black is what's concealing, so the white parts are what's coming through the image. And as you can see, as you scroll through here, it chooses different parts. So this layer is what it thought would make this part the most sharp, because that's what's coming through. And you can even tell just by looking at this Photoshop file, things are much sharper than they were before. Okay, and I'm going to save this back into Lightroom. And before I do, I'm going to merge these layers just because this file is going to be so large, it could be problematic. If you really wanted to save the Photoshop file, you might want to save it outside of Lightroom or something like that. For this example, I am just going to highlight all of the layers, right click, scroll down to flatten image, which just sort of merges everything together. So it's sort of a destructive process. I wouldn't be able to go back. I want I, You'd want to make sure your focus stacking is the way you want it before you flatten it. But now that it's flattened, I'm going to save it back into Lightroom by saying Command S, puts it back into Lightroom. So we'll switch back there. Again, I did that flatten just to keep the file small and reasonably sized. If you think you're going to want to work with it later or anything like that, sometimes these larger ones can be too big, exceed a two gig file size limit. So you'd want to, you know, save it off separately or something like that. So I've got my file here in Lightroom. I'm just going to give it two stars just so I don't lose it. This one right here. And we're just going to do a quick zoom in, take a look at this rock. This is the one we looked at before. It's nice and sharp. And let's go jump up into these trees. And those trees and these rocks back here are nice and sharp as well. So now that we're back in Lightroom, if you had any little tweaks you wanted to do, put a little bit of a vignette on it. We would have to crop this just a little bit to sort of, you know, we've got these transparent pixels up here from where we did the alignment. So there's a couple little tweaks you do here in Lightroom, but you're pretty much at a finished image and, you, you know, beyond any of the little tweaks that you want to do with it. <laughs> That's how you can use the focus shift options within the Nikon system to help automate some of that focus stacking that I've shown you how to do manually before. You may still want to do it manually, but sometimes it's handy to know how to automate things should you choose to do so, and this is how you do it. 
So if you found this video helpful, please click that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips and tricks like these, mini gear reviews, and some behind the scenes, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching.